Hello Doraemon, so welcome back. So for this video, I'm back with you guys' favorite video, which is the one code video. I've already posted the Pythons and Unix one code video, which you know need to learn in order to like solve any question, like which is the basic structure you need to know to solve any question. So now let's get started, and we are going to start. Like I'm, I've taken a very sample question which is shown over here. This is asked on last IRA. So I'm just going to use this as a sample to show you how you have to write that one little code. So this is the basic structure which you'll get in every exam. Like this is the basic part of Java as you guys already know. Like these are not required. Only this import java.util.star which will have the necessary classes like scanner, and arrays and you will have one public class main as you guys if you know java you guys know about class is the main thing which is needed to execute a java program and then the main function so this is a basic structure so first once we get the co question what we have to do is this thing here in this IRA, everything is used object oriented but it is not totally object oriented it is also logic oriented or uh, only we have to know about very simple concepts which is like class and how to like iterate through the class and call different functions those are the important things which you need to know other than that handling more complex question is not here so first you know about one class main already one class main is declared whereas in python it is different there is no class which is required to execute any basic program but whereas in java you know in, in order to execute at least print hello world that itself you have to write like four lines of code and for this you guys have known these things so class is a very simple concept in java so first what you have to do is um, first you have to like they have given like you have to write the getter and setter class parameterized constructor as require like that so we are going to only write the parameterized constructor we don't need this getter and setter class we can do these in the main class itself if you are very well versed and have a lot of time you can do that so but it is not required they will give you like things but uh, once you pass the test cases these are not like very important it's totally about you like how you want to solve the problem they'll be only looking into the logic so logic is the main thing for the program as you guys know so now we'll first declare this parameterized constructor so once you get this structure you have to write one class as you guys know why we are writing this class is we'll be given a series of outputs sorry series of inputs and we have to store like a set of inputs in one single place where you can access like it's like your chocolate bars one for your brother one for your sister like that if you have four bars you'll be dividing it between four people like your parents and your sister siblings like if you want like that we are going to put college them in one single place and we are going to access it with their names like that as how you family live in a single house like the same thing so for that only we're using this class object and here inside this you have to declare all these things which is given over here in order to access them so you have to put the data type and the variable name so here i'm going to just put int t data number i'm going to give t number and it is a and the next one is of stripe string and it is of name so i'm giving t name and next is capacity so t cap and Next is rating, which is also of type integer. So I'm really going to get T rate. And next is type. So that is of type string. And that, that is data type. That's it. So once you write this, what you have to do is you have to declare one function. It can be the same name of this class. So in order to not get confused, it's better you put these two names same because in the upper part we'll be declaring this so in order to not get confused just put these two names similar and inside this you have to pass all these values instead of separated by a semicolon you have to replace them by a comma so that's it once we do that this class will be complete and
last one is shrink so now this is done make sure you remove the semicolons properly and after this we are going to just connect these values to the class or function so how do we do that so we have to just put this dot t num so why we are doing this we are going to give names to the variables how we will access them inside the main function so by this name only you will be accessing these values from the main function so that's why we are assigning these values to these variable names again so you can keep it same because it will uh, avoid confusions i'm going to keep the same names and t name is equal to t name and t cap is equal to t cap make sure it is this dot so this dot is the keyword this is the keyword and again this dot t rate is equal to t rate and this dot t type is equal to t type and that's it so this is our parameterized constructor once we declare this in the main function this will automatically get executed next of is you're going to get the inputs so here in this place first thing you have to declare is the scanner class so you guys know if you are writing programs in java you have to use the scanner class to get the inputs so we are going to just put scanner and here you are going to give one name for the scanner and scanner and here you're going to give system dot in that's it so after this we have to declare this object class just like how you declare an array we are going to put object and we are going to give it a name like o and you're going to give new object and this number you're going to or get it from the set of inputs which you are going to get so usually there are four to five inputs if it is given here in this place like n then there is no problem you can use the same number here but if not you have to count like we will get the t number t name and t cap and t rate and the theta type again same five values so we got one set of five values two set of five values and then we have got three set of five values and we have got four set of five values and yeah so these are some inputs to get the output so we have actually four set of values so you have to give the same number here four and then you have to get these inputs so how do we get these inputs uh, you know like how we'll get an in series of input just like an array so we are going to use the for so you're going to put for int i is equal to zero and i less than four and i plus plus so once you count the value you'll be using the same value every way and here you have to get the input so how do we get the inputs is first you have to declare the data type and the name so you can use the same names also and please uh, like if you want you can keep a difference so, like in the object class put a t or something in front of the same names and here use them without a t so you can uh, like differentiate which is from the object and which is from the main class so these variable names we are going to use it until we pass it to this object class after that we are not going to use these names so make sure you put int num so the data type is very important and you'll be getting yes dot next int and after only getting this this is not over because yes dot next int will get only one value and then it will be waiting in the same line to get the next value but whereas in our input the next output input is given in the next line so we have to jump to the next line in order to get the next input so you, here you should put yes dot next line only then it will jump to the next line 
so after that uh, what we are going to do we'll move on to the next input which is of type string and it is name here you can just put just s dot next line and close it as it is of type string you'll be using directly next line it will get the input and jump to the next line so like that we have to get all these inputs for four times so once you declare one set like this one set 101 star 605 and movie after this you can leave this and move on to the next one to get the extra inputs and after getting this inside this for loop itself what you have to do you have to pass these values to this object class so how do we do that same like and how you pass an array so here o of i is equal to new object and here you are going to pass these values which is num name and whatever extra you declare that's how we will add the objects to our object class so guys with this like 50% of your code is almost completed and after writing this we have to declare like two more functions which is the basic structure which you'll be asked to write as you can see here you have to get uh, two in two functions here implement two static methods one is to get the theta capacity and another one is to get the second lowest theta rating in the solution class and for the first one they have given the definition so you have to declare like two functions where do we declare that so we have do we don't have to create one more class to declare those functions as of in python we can do that in the main class itself as we have one main class here itself so what we have to do is make sure you get out of this static main function and then out of this you are going to create create one more function like public static and make sure you keep it int and you're going to give some name usually i'll give it as fun one so i don't have problem in like declaring the names again and again so here what you're going to do you're going to pass the object make sure when you pass it you have to put also the data type so object of o like this you should give and like whatever input should be given to the first function as you can see here this function will take an int value as the input parameter and you have to like give int here you have to just give like int of something like parameter or pa something and inside this you want to again iterate through the list so how do we iterate again we have to use the for so for of int i is equal to zero and i less than four make sure you remember this number everywhere and usually we'll get only four and you have to just give like o of i dot whatever name is given over here not the names given over here whatever name is given over here o of i dot t num and the respective uh, theta number will be getting printed or it will get used and like if you want to declare one more function make sure and when you declare function one more thing to remember is a function should always return a value in this java so whenever you write a function just write return one and inside this main function just declare one variable and call this main function like fun one and we are going to pass the object and one of the parameter which you will be getting here i'm just giving it as p and this one will return to this k and you can print anything over here by using system dot out dot print and then you can do everything in the in this function itself but for calling it you have to declare it like this once you declare this function will be called and this return one one value this k value is not getting printed here so this will not affect any of your output and the same pattern for the next function also like you have to declare one more int p or o no like e and give fun two and the object and some input and after giving that make sure you get out of this you will use this technique i'll just click on this curly braces and it will show the start and end and after this i will declare like public one more function just static and int of fun two and i will pass uh, the object 
object o and then just any value int or string what type it is i think for this question it is string string of h something and then again you have to again iterate through the list just like i have written here you have to again do the same thing and whenever you create this thing make sure you put return one in the end because uh, if you don't put this return one it will show you the function should return a value we don't have to do get that and that's it so this is the entire structure which you have to follow and inside this you'll be writing the logic based on what is given over here and i'll solve this question in the next video and that's it guys have you felt about this question this is uh, just a very simple question have you felt about the structure so the structure is the main thing which you want to keep in mind in order to solve any question so i hope this is helpful for you guys if it was please make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon and also like the video if you are supporting me your support is the most important thing for me and we are growing thank you so much for joining in my family i will keep you updated and interested in my channel and that's it for this video guys and this is your very own kodoremon signing off and until then keep learning keep rocking i'll meet you guys in the next one bye bye cheers